Despite the incredible success of the dive watch as a category, most of us quite frankly don't need the extreme specs, the aggressive dimensions often associated with professional dive oriented watches. So in this video, I'm gonna share some of my top dive watches that offer diving style and format that we know and love, but also not being overbearing. How I'm gonna classify this is more of just an everyday style dive watch. We have four different categories that we're gonna look at underneath that larger umbrella. We don't need the ISO 6425 compliant type of nature here, uh, but we have these four different personas that we'll look at, have a few different options underneath each one of those personas so that you have a good jumping off point for your research if you like this style of watch. We also are going to look at a variety of different prices so everybody can feel involved here. Also, before we jump in here, if you want more things dive watches, we have two great articles to check out. One will be looking at some great picks under $500 for dive watches if you're really on a budget. I'll link to that down in the description below. And then in addition to that, our comprehensive dive watch list that has dozens of different dive watches at a variety of different price ranges. Some of them will be included here as well, but definitely check that out after watching this video. And also just a little disclaimer, as we're entering the later half of January here, I do wanna let you guys know that Hamilton is going to be raising their prices on their entry level models, like the khaki field auto mechanical. So if you do want the opportunity to get in on that before that price increase happens, now is a very good time to do so before they make that price increase. Just a little disclaimer, I'll have a link to that in the description down below. We are an authorized dealer of Hamilton. Any purchase also supports content like this. Now our first category are desk divers. So this is for those individuals that like the look of a dive watch, but start hyperventilating in the shallow end of the pool and are better suited to be wearing their dive watch at their desk. So I probably could be included in this category as well. First watch here is the Timex Navi XL. So this is a watch that's not gonna blow you away when you get it in your hands in terms of delivering above its weight. It absolutely feels of its price range. But if you just want the looks of a dive watch, this is one of these watches that comes to mind immediately at the affordable end. This watch is not trying to go ahead and say it's an ISO compliant dive watch that can handle anything that you throw at it. Instead, it's just going for that look and versatility that can come with a watch that's going to look of the type, but still give you a lot in the department of wearability. This comes in with a 41 millimeter case, 13.5 millimeter thickness, and a 50.7 millimeter lug to lug, where it's pretty true to that size, if not slightly larger. 100 meters of water resistance is a defining characteristic of this one, although that is enough for the ISO 6425 standard. This is not something that you're going to want to take diving with you, but has a little bit of aquatic upside. And inside you have the automatic Miyota 8215, a variety of different dial colors to choose from and a lot to get lost in. This was originally debuted back in 2019 and has been a staple within Timex's collection ever since. At the time of the release of this watch, many people were thinking it was going to be the successor to the SKX, but because it falls underneath the Seiko 5 sports collection, it was never intended to fit that mold despite looking like it from afar, and that is the SRPD51. So this is part of the Seiko 5 sports collection. You have a wide variety to go for here. This is just one example of going in this direction, but I simply love these watches. They're probably some of the best in the price range, regardless if you're talking about this dive-oriented aesthetic. Now, some people might be really struggling with the concept of these being dive watches, but in terms of fitting this desk diver type of profile, I think it absolutely does that. 42.5 millimeter case, basically mirroring the SKX case, thickness of 13.4 millimeters, and a compact lug of 40 six millimeters. These wear on wrist like a 40 and a half millimeter case. So they really are great when you're able to think about maximizing this on a wide variety of wrists, 100 meters of water resistance, which is more than enough for pretty much anything you're going to throw at it. And then automatic Seiko 4R36 on the inside, mineral glass, features hacking and hand winding. So it's no 7S26 anymore, just a no nonsense, great watch for just under $300. Now, Hamilton is known primarily for their great reputation in producing some of the best field watches on the entire market. One watch that does fall victim to that success is the Khaki Navy Scuba. This is an enigma of a watch in many ways, just because you look at what it's going for. You have khaki, you have navy, you have this aquatic side of it, but then you also have the field watch side of it. So it's basically positioned as a hybrid of those two things. It doesn't necessarily lean in either direction too much, which makes it, I think, a good watch for this category. You're looking at a 40 millimeter case, but it is going to wear larger than that. I'd say like a 41 or so on wrist. Then looking at the thickness, 12 millimeters, water resistance of 100 meters. There's also a 43 millimeter option, which 
probably couldn't fit underneath this category because it does extend out to 300 meters of water resistance and is more of a true dive watch. Then you look into the movement on the inside, the Eta C07.111. This is going to be the reduced beat frequency form of the Eta 2824 modified by Swatch Group to allow the power reserve of 80 hours. Now I just noticed for that first category is mostly more attainable pieces. We're gonna shift over into our next collection, which has a little bit of overlap with that first one. And this is, so can I wear it with a suit? So if you've watched one too many Bond films and are convinced that the dive watch presents the single best option for everything from action-packed espionage operations to fine dining, you might find yourself asking, but can I wear it with a suit? And if you are that person, you probably wanna look at these dive watches here. First up, we have the Tudor Black Bay. This is probably one of the most obvious choices here in terms of having a dressed up heritage approach to a dive watch that you can get probably maximum versatility in its segment. 39 millimeters thickness is going to be a large determining factor in what you're gonna also consider. 11.7 millimeters on the Black Bay 58, which is typically the one that gets a little bit more hype. 47.5 millimeters on the lug to lug there, which makes it wear like a 39 and a half on wrist and automatic MT calibers on the inside. Sapphire crystal with that box to fact, aluminum insert. I would say the two dressiest options would be the gilt version as well as the navy. You could also make an argument for the taupe as well, but the hue of the silver might throw some people off and doesn't have the same level of sheen to it like some other metals that you'll see from the Black Bay collection. But no question, a modern classic from Tudor. Now, when most consider the modern collection of Omega in their Seamaster catalog, they probably think of the Omega Seamaster Diver 300 meter professional, but not this one. And this would actually be my just personal choice in terms of which one I like a little bit more in terms of a taste, um, mostly just because of this very idea. It's versatile as can be, and that is the Omega Seamaster 300. This follows the form of the original 1957 to a finer degree and really paying more reverence to the past. This comes in with a 41 millimeter case with no helium escape valve to speak of, 13.7 millimeter thickness and a lug to lug of 47.8 millimeters. I would say this one wears like a 40 and a half on wrist, if not smaller. Definitely wears smaller than the Diver 300. Since we are talking about a Seamaster 300, 300 meters of water resistance, and you're getting the Omega 8900 caliber on the inside, the 8912, which is a great thing to look for. And one thing I love about the 8900 movements, it's amazing when you're traveling, is going to be that isolated function for the hour hand. And also pairing this with a no date option makes it amazing because the only tedious part about having that isolated function is there's no quick set on the date. In this case, you don't have to worry about that. Traditional three hand, no date and it just is a joy to wear and a fantastic travel companion to go along with it. When you consider the umbrellas of luxury conglomerates in the world of watchmaking, you think of Richemont as being one of those pillars, but underneath Richemont, there's a lot of different brands that you can get lost into. But if I had to pick one brand that I think delivers the most compelling package, when looking at the competition at the industry at large and probably the best asset for Richemont in terms from a watchmaking perspective, it has to be JLC. Very few brands can span and have the amount of breadth that they do from a watchmaking standpoint, movement production standpoint, and offering everything from an entry level quartz reverso up to gyro turbulence. So there's just a lot to get lost in. Here we have the JLC Polaris Date. This watch comes in 42 millimeters with its case, 13.9 millimeters in thickness, 48.5 millimeter lug to lug. So wearing slightly smaller than that, I would say it wears like a 41 on wrist, water resistance of 200 meters, and then an automatic JLC 899AB. These movements, I believe, kind of set the standard in many ways on what a movement in this price bracket should look like. And with JLC's reputation and being one of the leaders in vertical integrated uh, creation of movements in the industry, uh, you're getting a lot to, of course, like here with the Polaris being one of their underrated collections within their catalog. Now, many of the characteristics that I affiliated with JLC, I think could also be attached to this brand, but being a German brand, and that is Glassuta Original. The watch that we have here is the CQ. So the CQ is available in a few different options. You have the Pano Date, which is going to be a tad bit louder, but still, 
so refined in what it's going for. It has some different dial colors to choose from, but they also offer a 39.5 millimeter option, which wears very similar to the Black Bay 58. This is one of my favorite dive watches on the market. I've been really drawn to get one for myself. As of late, I think they're just beautiful. If you look at the 39.5 millimeter option, which wears like a 40 on wrist, you have a 12 millimeter thickness, 47 millimeter lug to lug, still getting 200 meters of water resistance, a nice dome sapphire crystal. And the movement on the inside, although you can't see it in this instance, is class leading. 3911 movement, probably one of the best looking movements that you are going to find. And if I had to think of a dress dive watch or something that could be worn with the suit as a dive watch, this would be one of them. Now for our next category, we have occasionally in the water. This is somebody that's been, you know, maybe training for some time, going to be doing their first scuba dive at a Sandals Resort probably. Maybe they go to Atlantis and the Bahamas, but that's really what they're going for here. They just want the functionality when they do decide to get in the water to be able to be capable of doing it, but also not forget that they have to wear this thing another 364 days a year. If you're somebody that wanted to spend more money on the resort than maybe the watch, that's where the Castio Duro comes in. This is still a really versatile piece. You could wear this year round. It would look out of place with a lot of different attire, variety of different bezel options, dials to choose from now. They've truly been expanding this out. It's an Amazon heartthrob at this point, selling for $60, which is pretty crazy considering what you're getting for the money. 44 millimeter case, but with the lug to lug wears much smaller than that. I would say it wears almost like a 41, if not smaller than even that metric. Thickness, because this is of course movement on the inside, you are getting a 12 millimeter thick dive watch with 200 meters of water resistance. Next, we have a mechanical option in the more attainable realm. That is the Orient Kamasu. So this is the watch that represents a part of Orient's dive watch catalog that is all about just giving you maximum versatility, being capable enough to handle, say, like a dive in, say, a resort environment, but maybe not being a professional dive watch. But it does deliver on many fronts. 41.8 millimeter case, but this wears like a true 40, if not a 39 and a half on wrist. Thickness of 12.8 millimeters, so reasonable there. 46.3 millimeters, aiding in that aforementioned idea about it wearing smaller than a 40 millimeter case. 200 meters of water resistance. And on the inside, you have the Orient F6922. These movements run typically better than Miyota and Seiko calibers that I found being priced in similar ranges. The range of deviation also for these movements is a little bit tighter than those other brands. And then the great thing about this one as well is one of the only options from the Orient Dive Watch collection that also offers a Sapphire Crystal. So about a year and a half ago, we saw the release of the Tissot Seastar 2000, which is the professional dive watch from Tissot. Improved loom, wave dial, extended water resistance, but the core model, which also offers a ton of versatility, is going to be the Tissot Seastar 1000. This is the flagship dive watch from Tissot. 43 millimeter case, probably wears closer to a 42 millimeter on wrist. Variety of dial colors to choose from. Thickness of 12.7 millimeters, water resistance of 300 meters, and an automatic edit C07.111 on the inside, 80 hour power reserve, sapphire crystal, and just checks off a lot of the boxes if you're somebody that's looking for that first legit dive watch from Switzerland. And then for our last pick here in this category, we have the Seiko SPB143. When these were released, Seiko got some resistance from some of the collectors, just because you see the price tag over $1,000 for a Seiko watch, is it worth it? In many of their instances where they have done this, where they've extended their price range, I can understand that resistance. But until you've tried this watch on, you've handled it in person, I don't know if you can really go at it the same way. I think this is really an amazing dive watch for the money. If you didn't have this preconceived notion about where you've seen Seiko watches being priced in the past, you probably wouldn't be saying it. It's just phenomenal. And I think it's probably my favorite dive watch that Seiko currently produces, or at least the range of models that fall underneath this SPB collection, just over $1,000. 5 millimeter case being a big reason for that with a 47.6 millimeter lug to lug. Wears like a 39 and a half to 40 on wrist, thickness of 13.2 millimeters, so not overbearing. This is a true professional dive watch to go along with it. 6R35 movement with that extended 70 hour power reserve, 200 meters of water resistance, class leading loom, and really calls back to that 62 Moss from 1965. And if you wanna to get to the bread and butter of what Seiko is all about, but also getting a more premium offering and something that would work on a wide variety of wrists, this is one to absolutely add to your radar if it's not already, but it probably already is, but try to go try one of these on in person if you haven't. It's part of the Seiko Luxe collection and a big part of the Luxe collection. It's not available online in some parts of the world. 
So if you can, definitely try one of these on. And you know, if you do own one, let other people know what you think. Cause I know there's some resistance sometimes if Seiko gets above a thousand dollars. And for our last category here, we have heritage. So this is somebody that likes wearing some salvage denim. Maybe they drink some pour over coffee after carefully weighing out their grounds, swear by red wing boots or some other Goodyear welted boot and think culture peaked in the mid 20th century. These are the type of dive watches that you're gonna be looking at. I am wearing salvage denim right now, so I feel personally attacked after reading that description. First watch here though is the Oris Diver 65. So if you're talking about mid 20th century design, uh, this is one that, hey, it's in the freaking name. Different case options to choose from as well as case materials to choose from now. A conventional option that people will commonly associate with this model family is 40 millimeters on those 12.8 millimeter thickness when factoring in even that dome sapphire crystal, 48 millimeter lug to lug, so where's very true to that 40 millimeter size, 100 meters of water resistance, which is a common criticism for these pieces, but this is the heritage equivalent to the more popular Aquas. And if you are all about that design DNA of mid 20th century type of approaches, this is where this one starts to make a little bit even more sense than the Aquas, if you are that type of individual. Now we have one of my favorites in the heritage department around $1,000, and that is the Zodiac Super Seawolf Skin. When you look at the Seawolf collection, many people don't consider that there are different variations. You have the 53, the compression models. The skin is going to be the most compact and true to the original 1953 Seawolf. And again, 1953, same year as the 50 Fathom, same year as the Rolex Submariner. It was a part of that surge of dive watches in the early part of the 1950s. So this watch comes in 38.7 millimeter case. If you're measuring that case, where's like a 39 on wrist, 46.4 millimeter lug to lug, thickness of 12.8 millimeters, water resistance of 200 meters, and an automatic STP 111 with a sapphire crystal. The older generations of these, I'll be honest, the loom was not very good. I know they're working on updating the loom on these watches. And if I had to pick one model from the Seagull family that I just think looks the part, I love the way that these wear on the wrist, whereas like a classic mid 20th century dive watch, this is the one I would go for. So when the surge of compressor style dive watches in the mid 20th century were on the rage, there's only a few brands that were actually producing these types of watches. And one of them was Longines. And here we're gonna lean even farther into the heritage dynamic going for the Longines Legend Diver at 36 millimeters. Now this is technically marketed more as like a woman's piece or a lady's piece, but I don't think that that's a fair representation of this watch at all. I think it's absolutely unisex and anybody can pull these off. You have some different dial colors to choose from now. You have an internal bezel, which makes the dial appear larger than typical compared to other 30 six millimeter watches. I'd say this one wears like a 37, 38 on wrist, 11.9 millimeters in thickness because you are getting a smaller version of an Eta caliber on the inside produced for Longines, sapphire crystal, dual crown design, while still offering 300 meters of water resistance. And for our last watch here, we have the Blancpain 50 Fathoms Bathyscaphe. So the Bathyscaphe was the other pillar within the 50 Fathoms collection that was developed more from a recreational standpoint. You had the 50 Fathoms, which was more on the nose about the true dive watch that was really the emerging scene in the 1950s. In the years to follow, you then saw the Bathyscaphe that would come along. It also was a bit more open to different case sizes. The one that we're gonna be looking at here is 38 millimeters, which wears like a dream on the wrist, thickness of 10.5 millimeters, lug to lug of 44.6 millimeters, water resistance of 300 meters. The great thing about these also is the fact that you are getting a 50 Fathoms watch under $10,000. This is a busy range. I was contemplating putting something like the Submariner on here as well as maybe an honorable mention, but I just think the modern Submariner doesn't feel like a heritage watch to me compared to say the 50 Fathoms, which is the pillar of dive watches. Every single standard that we've developed to expect from a dive watch in many ways. You talk about the time-elapsed bezel, loom markers on the bezel, loom featured on the dial. All of these were fundamental attributes of the original 50 Fathoms that now become just prevalent in conventional dive watches all across the industry. But all right guys, that's my list looking at some everyday dive watch options. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell icon, really would appreciate that. If you had to pick one of these categories that you would jump in, which one would it be? And also, if you had to pick one watch to be your everyday dive watch, which one would that be as well? Also, definitely check out teddybaldasar.com, full authorized dealer of 30 brands, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support, and full factory warranty for all the products that we offer. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I'll see you all very soon.